Hi, I'm Siluni Herat from Gamba Medical Student Association. We have released several videos on different sections of biology for A level students. And this is another lesson on reproduction. In this video, we are going to learn about the female reproductive system. This consists of two ovaries, two oviducts or fallopian tubes, a uterus and a vagina. These are the main internal structures of the female reproductive system. Ovaries. These are a pair that are found on either side of the uterus and they are held in place in the abdominal cavity by ligaments. The female gametes are stored and are developed before ovulation in the ovary. It also produces female sex hormones that are needed for the physiological changes that happen in the reproductive cycle. Now let's have a look at the cross section of ovary. The ovary consists of two tissue layers, the outer layer, cortex, and the inner layer, medulla. The outer layer of each ovary, it has a connective tissue layer covered by germinal epithelium. The cortex contains ovarian follicles that are in various stages of maturity. Each of these follicles has a oocyte. This is a partially developed egg surrounded by support cells which nourish and protect the oocyte. Primary follicles, ovarian follicles, these are also present in the cortex. The ovarian follicle, this has a fluid filled cavity called the antrum. During ovulation, the ovum is discharged from the ovary and the ruptured ovarian follicle, that becomes the corpus luteum and later on corpus albicans. The human ovum, this is a round cell which has 23 maternal chromosomes. It has a somewhat large cytoplasm and is surrounded by lots of supporting cells. There is also a clear layer that is present between the plasma membrane of the ovum and the supporting cells. The oviducts or the fallopian tube they extend from the uterus and form a funnel-like opening at each ovary. The distal end is very narrow. After ovulation, the cilia that is present on the inner epithelial lining of the oviduct helps collect the egg and propels the egg towards the uterus down the oviduct by the help of wave life contractions. Uterus or the womb is a thick pear-shaped chamber. Its walls are muscular and that helps it to expand during pregnancy and accommodate the fetus. Its inner lining the endometrium is highly vascularized with many blood vessels. The distal end of the uterus, this narrows down to form a neck called the cervix that opens into the vagina. The vagina, this is a muscular but elastic chamber lined by stratified epithelium. The vagina connects the external and the internal organs of reproduction. It is also the site where sperm is deposited by the penis and it also acts as the birth canal during birth. Eugenesis 
This is the process of the production of the female gamete. In a human female, the development of oocytes, mature oocytes, takes a long time. Immature eggs are present in the ovary and they are formed in the developing embryo before birth. But these eggs, they complete their development many years or even decades later during pu puberty. And the production of mature gametes, that stops at about the age of 45 to 50 years. Oogenesis, this begins in the female embryo, before birth, with the mitotic division of primordial germ cells. This gives rise to oogonia, or oogonium. Then the oogonia divides by mitosis to form cells, that begins meiosis. But this stops at prophase 1, before birth. Now, before birth, the egg cells, they are stopped at prophase 1. The development has post. And these cells are called primary oocyte. Each of these primary oocytes are found within a small follicle known as the primordial follicle. This is a cavity lined with protective cells. At birth, the ovaries together contain about 1 to 2 million primary oocytes. And out of these 1 to 2 million, only about 500 fully mature during the time between puberty and menopause. At puberty, FSH or the follicle stimulating hormone stimulates a small number of follicles to resume growth and development. Out of these, only one follicle fully matures. And during this time, the primary oocyte completes meiosis 1. In oogenesis, cytokinesis during meiosis happens unequally, and the cytoplasm is segregated to a single daughter cell, the most of the cytoplasm, and the less amount of cytoplasm is segregated to smaller cells known as polar bodies. These polar bodies degenerate as they are of no use. So a second reusite and a first polar body is produced here. Then Meiosis 2 starts, but this stops at metaphase. So now the secondary oocyte that is released at ovulation is stopped at metaphase 2. If a sperm penetrates the secondary oocyte, meiosis 2 completes. And the second oocyte divides into a mature ovum and secondary polar body. This will degenerate. If a sperm penetrates, there is a single mature ovum containing a sperm head at the end of oogenesis. So, fertilization occurs by the fusion of haploid nuclei of the sperm and the haploid ovum. The ruptured follicle that is left behind after ovulation happens develops into a corpus luteum. And if the egg is not fertilized and implantation does not occur, the corpus luteum it degenerates to form a scar of fibrous tissues called corpus albicans and then the egg dies. So a new follicle matures during the next cycle and the cycle continues. 
hormonal control of the human female reproductive cycles. Although males produce sperms continuously, females produce ova in cycles, once in every 28 days. These are linked. There are two linked reproductive cycles. Ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle. The ovarian cycle consists of two phases, follicular phase and luteal phase. The cyclic changes that occurs in the ovaries are what contains in ovarian cycle. The uterine cycle is consisting of the changes that occur about once a month in the uterus. It consists of three phases, proliferative phase, secretory phase and menstrual phase. Ovulation occurs about once in 20, 28 days from puberty until menopause from one of the two ovaries alternatively. Both of these cycles are regulated by hormonal activities and this links the two cycles. So the ovarian follicle growth and ovulation are synchronized and they occur coinciding with the establishment of the uterine lining in the uterine cycle. So the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle are synchronized. Now, if we consider day 14 as the day of ovulation, the period during which the follicle grows and the oocyte matures, the follicular phase occurs from day 1 to day 14. And the rest, luteal phase. The proliferative phase coincides with the follicular phase. The secretory phase occurs after ovulation. And the menstrual phase occurs at the end. At the beginning of follicular phase, GnRH is secreted from the hypothalamus. This in turn stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete very small amounts of FSH and LH. FSH stimulates follicle growth in the ovary and that is aided by LH. These stimulated follicles start making estradiol hormone. So the estradiol hormone level slowly rises during the follicular phase. During this time, the proliferative phase occurs in the uterus. The hormones of the ovary stimulates the uterus and the uterus starts preparing for supporting of an embryo. The growing follicles secretes estradiol and this stimulates the endometrium of the uterus to thicken. So as you can see, the follicular phase of the uter of the ovarian cycle coordinates with the proliferative phase of the uterine cycle. Low levels of estradiol inhibits the secretion of gonadotropin hormones from the anterior pituitary so that LH and FSH are kept at low levels in the follicular phase. This occurs through negative feedback mechanism. When the estradiol secretion by the growing follicles starts to increase at a rapid and sharp levels, high levels of estradiol stimulates the hypothalamus to increase the GnRH secretion, which stimulates the anterior pituitary to sharply rise the FSH and LH secretions. This produces a LH surge through positive feedback in cancer, as you can see in the graph. By this time, the maturing follicle 
containing a fluid filled cavity has enlarged forming a bulge at the surface after about a day of the elix surge the follicular phase ends and ovulation happens in response to both the fsh and lh peaks the follicle and the adjacent wall of the ovary ruptures which releases the secondary oocyte and this process is called ovulation the luteal phase of the ovarian cycle takes place after ovulation in the luteal phase LH stimulates the follicular tissues within the ovary to transform into glandular structures called the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum secretes progesterone and estradiol, which then exerts negative feedback mechanism on the hypothalamus and the pituitary. This feedback reduces the LH and FSH secretions to very low levels and this prevents the maturation of another egg in the ovary so there is only one egg matured the secretory phase of the menstrual cycle occurs during this time estradiol and progesterone that is secreted from the corpus luteum stimulates the maintenance and the further development of the lining of the uterus it enlarges the arteries and the growth of endometrial glands present in the endometrial wall. These glands secrete nutrient fluids which help sustain an early embryo if fertilization occurs. So the luteal phase of the ovarian cycle is coordinated with the secretory phase of the uterine cycle as you can see. If there is no implantation occurring, the low gonadotrophin levels at the end of luteal phase promotes disintegration of the corpus luteum to form corpus albicans. The disintegration of corpus luteum leads to the sharp decline in hormones. As a result, negative feedback of estradiol and progesterone on the hypothalamus and pituitary are removed. This enables the pituitary to produce FSH to stimulate the growth of a new follicle. So starting the next ovarian cycle. The corpus luteum disintegrates, which results in the drop in ovarian hormones. This brings about the end of the secretory phase. So the arteries constrict. The arteries present in the endometrial wall in the uterine lining disintegrates and shedding of endometrial tissues and fluids occurs. This is the menstrual phase of uterine cycle. The cyclic shedding of the blood rich endometrium from the uterus, a process that occurs in a flow and which lasts for a few days through the cervix and vagina is the definition of menstruation. Menopause. This is the cessation of or the stopping of ovulation and menstruation in a woman. Usually menopause takes place between the ages of 45 and 55 years. During this time the ovarian supply of oocytes runs out and finishes and the estrogen that is produced by the ovary decreases over time. Ovaries become less responsive to the hormones FSH and LH that are produced by the anterior pituitary. This results in menopause. So hope you got a clear understanding on this lesson. Please check out our channel for more such similar videos. All the very best for your ideas.